Levi Yokley, who's the editor in chief of PoliticMode.com, is with me this afternoon as we get started. Hey, Eli, how are you? Hey, I'm great, Mark. How are you? There's a lot of stuff happening in the Senate race right now, isn't there? This has been a crazy week. You know, yes, on Tuesday we were three weeks out from primary, and everything is flying this week. Uh, we've got new ads, we've got new endorsements, and it's just going to keep escalating as we get closer to August 7th when Republican voters go to the polls. What's the latest right now? Who's going negative on who? I mean, they're, they're fighting back. Bruner's been pretty negative. He's going to join me in a few minutes, but Sarah Steelman's fighting back a little bit, isn't she? Sarah Steelman's fighting back. She has her own ad going after Bruner pretty hard uh, over ag issues. And then Sarah Steelman's getting help from Democrats who are going after Bruner this week as well. Uh, Claire McCaskill launched ads against all three of her opponents today, and in kind of an interesting move, three weeks ahead of the primary, she launched ads criticizing all of her opponents. But she, the, the attacks were most singing on Brunner. Um, they, they, she, they kind of piggyback off of the attacks that Steelman has used uh, on a, on Brunner over his company's use of debt. Um, another PAC, uh, the majority PAC, it's Harry Reid's super PAC, basically, a Senate Democrat to get Senate Democrats reelected. They've also launched new ads against Brunner. Uh, this this week. So Ian you know, Bruner's been on air going negative for the last few months. He's been on air for a long time prior to that trying to get his name ID out. And now in these last three weeks when voters are starting to pay attention, he's getting competition on TV from a lot of these groups trying to tear his lead down. Well, and, and that's the sign of someone who has a bit of a lead. It's also the sign of some of these other camps holding back the money till the last minute because this is when people are probably going to make their decisions, isn't it? Absolutely, and that's what Sarah Steelman's doing. You know, I was talking to an advisor of hers earlier this week, and they said, you know, we we really didn't like uh, having having those shots coming at us, but now we can, now we can shoot back basically, and now they can shoot back hard um, on, on air whenever they're getting assistance from all these Democratic groups. You know, Sarah Steelman is getting a lot of help right now from Democratic groups like Majority PAC, like Sarah, like, like Claire McCaskill, who are really using this message that she's been trying to push during a lot of the last several debates. She's been trying to go out for Bringer, his company's use of like millions of dollars of debt uh, in the merger that the Biden had a few, few years ago. Um, they're trying to blame, put that up square, squarely on Bruner uh, on television screens in front of voters, and now they're getting a lot of help from a lot of money the Democrats have been sitting on these last yeah, few months. Yeah, it's interesting. Eli, does that tell you, because the, uh, the theory is, and I want to see if we can gauge this here, that Senator McCaskill would much rather face Sarah Steelman, that they perceive her as easy to beat in a general election. I, I, I think it means that they see John Brunner as tough to beat. Uh, John Brunner comes with no political record, and that's really, really nice for a candidate to have. Now, he does have this business record, and just like they're doing to Mitt Romney right now, they can, they can try to do that to Brunner as well. If you look at the ads that Claire McCaskill put out today, it's pretty clear that they see Brunner as a challenging candidate, and they see Aiken as the easiest candidate. And you're seeing that in a lot of the Democratic messaging right now. Uh, they're really going after Brunner hard, and they're trying to help how they can build his conservative credentials. Are you aware of anyone who will have a poll out as we get closer to the uh, the primary? Um, is is yeah. there a major poll that will come out? I don't know, Mark. I'm, I'm sure that you know public policy polling has been doing a lot of polls. They're a Democratic leaning firm. Uh, they've done a lot of polls in this race. If you look at Erasmuson reports, they've done a few polls in this race. And I'm sure that as we get closer to August 7th, you know, we're we're less than three weeks out now. That they've got to be in the field polling Missouri. You know, Missouri is one of the most one of the most watched Republican primaries in the country right now. Um, it's one of the last ones. It's one of the only ones Republican and people can watch right now. Uh, but it's a huge deal in terms of. How, what kind of candidate is going to be taking on Claire McCaskill, one of the most targeted Democrats in the country this year? This Republican primary is going to be watched very closely in the next few weeks, and I, and I can't imagine a poll not coming out. Well, yeah, I would, I would certainly hope so. It's going to be interesting, and, and you're right. It's just a couple of weeks left. Eli, thanks a lot for your help. I appreciate it. Yeah, good to be here.